Mr. Chairman, so it was the recommendation of PIAC that the proceeds, the proceeds of lifting by JOHL should be paid into the Petroleum Holding Fund. Here we are talking about the amount in excess of the 100 million United States dollars. It was the recommendation of PIAC that those proceeds should be paid into the Petroleum Holding Fund um, as the committee is convinced that the proceeds form part of Ghana's petroleum revenues. Yes, so Mr. Chairman, like we indicated, the committee took a lot of things into consideration in arriving at this conclusion. Now, the portions of the act that I referred to, section six and the amended version of section seven, they both indicate clearly that even revenues accruing to the Republic from the direct or indirect participation of the Republic shall first and foremost be paid into the Petroleum uh, Holding Fund. Mr. Chairman, it is the considered view of the committee that it matters not that other issues may be introduced into the whole conversation. What matters for us, our understanding of the law, is that the PRMA is the primary law that governs the utilization management of petroleum revenues. And it says that any revenue accruing to the state, whether directly or indirectly, should first be paid into the petroleum holding fund. The chairman, we also know that GMPC is the primary commercial arm of the Republic of Ghana in petroleum uh, activities. And so when this happens, we are dealing with GMPC per se. If you look at the whole GOHL transaction, it is GMPC that undertook those transactions. So our position as a committee, Mr. Chairman, is that that lifting, whether it is lifted by a 100% subsidiary of GMPC or not, ought to come first into the petroleum holding fund from where disbursements can be made for whatever reason. So, Mr. Chairman, our position on that matter is clear. Of course, for purposes of disclosure, the uh, GMPC referred us to an advice from the Attorney General Department purporting to okay such a transaction in the nature and manner that they dealt with this issue. Mr. Chairman, we are happy to say that we did not come to this conclusion without recourse to that particular advice. Bear with me, just once again. Yes, you did not come to your conclusion lightly uh, without recourse to that particular one. But did you, did you have a good look, comprehensive look at about all the laws, at all the laws? You seem to be talking about the Petroleum Management Act, the HO, whatever it is. Did you read the GMPC laws and all those? GMPC has got specific laws. They got the PNDC law 64, they got GMPC law whatever. So, um, yeah. Sorry, it's okay. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Chairman, we know, we know, we know about the ad, but we got copies. Oh, so don't worry. Mr. Uh, Chairman, we yes, did. I've got a copy. I'll show. I'll share with you. Yeah. So I was asking. GMPC has got uh, its law. GMPC law 63. Sorry, 64, 83. Did you read all those things? Did you take them into account? Chairman, we did. And your mind was, was yes. clearly made up that yes. uh, there seems to be some breach of law here. Chairman, our mind was clearly made up that those monies ought to have formed part of the petroleum revenues of Ghana. Second. Chairman, um, I want to believe we are looking at paragraph three of the proponent's uh, motion. I want to believe that, and it reads, illegal payment of oil revenues into offshore accounts in flagrant violation of Article 176 of the 1992 Constitution. I want to believe that he's speaking to that and he's demonstrating that. Very well, yes. I want to believe so. That is the ground we are dealing with. So let's, yeah, let's. Is that what we are dealing with? Mr. Chair, the position of PIAC in our report 
did not extend to specifically making references to the constitutional, I mean, to constitutional violations, they say. So in the way and manner in which the ground is formulated, it will be, it will not be accurate to say that we are speaking directly. Well, you're, you're right. I don't yeah. think we need to trouble you on that. Yeah. You know, so you are explaining to us. Yeah, sure. You are explaining yes. to us what yeah. you have put in your document. Yes. So it's fair. Yes, exactly. uh, yes go on with that. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, you started the questions already. <laughs> you want to thank me. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Let's leave those ones then. Yeah, um, Alpha, please uh, continue and finish with your... So respectfully, Mr. Chair, um, so what happened was we considered that opinion um, thoroughly um, on any day that those revenues ought to have formed part of the petroleum revenues of Ghana and ought to have been deposited first in the petroleum holding fund and not any other account. So for us, it was contrary to law for that money to have been deposited in any account if at all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Very well. Are you done with your testimony on that issue? Okay. Um, okay. So we'll, we'll start with the Honorable KT Hammond. Yeah, I asked you the question that I'm reiterating because it troubles me um, that you said you took account of uh, the GMPC law, particularly 64, the establishment uh, um, law of GMPC, and you went through the specific provisions in the law which allows them to set up companies, uh, set up, uh, what, tell me, you keep on nodding, what, what did you glean from, from that? What did you glean from their law? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, it is true that yes, GMPC law allows them to set up companies. We not, are not disputing. Not just that, in yes. terms of their financial relationship, they set up the laws and then what? They set up the companies. Well, sorry, they set up the companies and then what? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, you see, as a committee, if you look at our functions under the law, we are a public oversight body, additional public oversight body that seeks by the additional public oversight body that seeks to take their public interest at heart when it comes to uh, what do you governance consider? of petroleum. Try, try, uh, try and uh, concentrate on us. Yes. yes. So, so GMPC law, you looked at the GMPC yes, law. Yes, we did. And then uh, you are conversant the fact that GMPC is able to set up companies. They are allowed by their laws. Yes. So I'm asking you, not your accountability or your oversight responsibility. If you didn't have that, you won't be sitting here today. No. You are here because by virtue of that. So yes. I'm asking you about the companies which are allowed by uh, GMPC law 64 to be set up by them. You said you read it. In terms of the relationship, uh, their financial relationship, what, what do they do? How do they go about uh, the company's uh, um, accounts? Mr. Chairman, if a company established as a private limited liability, which has come to our understanding that uh, GOHL is a private limited liability, of course it is a separate entity from even the uh, the holding company. It's a separate one. Yes, uh -huh. of course. Uh -huh. And then their finances are dealt with in accordance with the company's acts. Nothing and, to do. And, and, nothing to do with the petroleum holding account and anything. Nothing to do with that. Mr. Chairman, that is precisely where the problem is. <laughs> That's no <all> problem. <laughs> I mean, you identified the issue. They are allowed to do that, and you said that if they are a company, yes. then they apply strictly the company rules. Yes. You made the point clearly. Yes. So what is the difficulty? Mr. Chairman, the difficulty? I agree with you. The difficulty is that. We are enjoined by law as a committee to ensure that not even a, a peso or a dollar of petroleum revenue due to the public goes elsewhere other than where You it are not goes. enjoined by law to have conflation of the law in your brains. You are not allowed to do that. No, Mr. <laughs> Maybe unless there are specific issues uh -huh. that... Um, so no, 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 wants to we'll, we'll, we'll get there. My, yeah. my colleagues are getting very yeah. <laughs> yeah, getting related. But let, let, let's settle this first. Yeah. You just made a point, uh, to me rightly, yeah. that uh, they are enjoined uh, by the Establishing uh, Act um, to be able to set up companies. You've also accepted that if it is a company, 
which has its uh, corporate um, personalities and all those things, you say that then they operate within the confines of the company um, act, isn't it? Um, they are not part of uh, the petroleum bit we are talking about. Mr. Chairman, I will respectfully disagree with the fact that they are not part of no, the petroleum. If, if they are separate, how do they become uh, Mr. married Chairman, to That it? was why I said this is where precisely the problem is. I made a statement. Is it a legal problem or factual problem? Mr. Chairman, it's both. Go on with it. It's both. Mr. Uh -huh. Chairman, I made a statement that the only recognized uh, commercial entity that represents the interests of Ghana in upstream petroleum activities is the GMPC. Well, it's not so what you feel. We're talking about the law. Exactly. That's why it's the law I'm, I'm referring to now. The law the allows law, them, the law, GMPC law 64 allows them to set up companies. Mr. I'm Chairman, delivering the point. I will yield. I'm done with my questions. Okay. Only my colleague yeah. and then uh, the other colleagues. Uh, will, will, will. Thank you very much, uh, Co Chair. Um, Mr. Alpha, right? Um, the monies in issue, did they constitute revenue for purposes of the Petroleum Revenue Management Act? Mr. Chairman, in our respective opinion, yes, as a right. committee. And you can confirm to the committee that the revenue so assessed and collected was not paid into the Petroleum Holding Fund, correct? The chairman, yes. And the said money was used to acquire 7% interest in a limited liability company. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that will not be accurate. Okay. Mr. Chairman, at the time of Lifton, the company had already been established. Very well. Right. Mr. Chairman, this was a company that was established by Anadarko itself even prior to the acquisition. Right. And it was established in Cayman Islands. Very well. Another issue um, Pierre, you know, looked at, I thought that it was since uh, our report is coming to Parliament, Parliament can make uh, further considerations. So, Mr. Chairman, the company was already established. And for purposes of this transaction, when Anadago wanted to, uh, you know, sell off its, um, um, you know, interest, Anadago made that known to the government of Ghana. And Mr. Chairman would uh, recognize that Ghana exercised our preemption right, you know, to acquire, uh, you know, this interest in, in the, in the, uh, in, in those uh, the, uh, in blocks. Yes. So, Mr. Chairman, what I'm trying to suggest is that even from the beginning of the whole transaction, this was a preemption right exercised by the Republic of Ghana to acquire interest, in the interest of the people of Ghana. This is where we are coming from. Preemption rights to acquire interest in the interest of the people of Ghana. And as a public oversight body on this, we thought that whatever interest was acquired, it matters not that GMBC subsequently transferred it to a limited liability company which is 100% is subsidiary or not. In our opinion, we are clear that whatever proceeds come out of that transaction ought to constitute petroleum revenue under the laws of Ghana. All right. Thank you very much. And um, was the payment for the transaction made by GMPC? directly to Anadako. Mr. Chairman, that wasn't very, very clear to us. Of course, the, 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 what we had was that uh, payments were not lodged in the account. If Mr. Chairman uh, would follow, uh, it was later, and that is not actually um, on record to us, that we heard where it was even deposited and all of that. Where, were the payments made by the Ministry of Finance? Mr. Chairman, uh, Piak is not in a position to confirm exactly that. Very well. Honorable members, uh, you, you may take your turns to ask the witness questions. Um, honor, yes, Honorable uh, Ejapa Mesa, yeah. and followed by Honorable Okujeto yes, Ablakwa. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman, for the opportunity. Uh, Mr. Alpha, you make comments in your report to the effect 
in your 2011 report that 2021 apologies uh, the paragraph 3.1.1 that you made reference to earlier that and share my with your permission if I may read in line with GMPC strategy to increase its stake in viable oil blocks the corporation acquired a 7% interest from Occidental Petroleum and Adarko in respect of the company's DWT, WCTP assets for 199 million effective first April 2021. This acquisition is to be Honorable transferred. Honorable member, I think that is what he read to the committee, yes. right? So can you go directly to ask your question based okay. upon that? Mr. Chairman, um, is, is the witness aware that this statement in itself is not entirely accurate. It will be unfair. That, it will be unfair that, to let, me, let me. Let me. Yes. Let me. Let yes. me add. Uh, you should. Uh -huh, you should. In that, yes. In, in that. If you want to. GNPC actually acquired JOHL as an existing company from Anadaku. I think that evidence has been given before this committee. He has, he has said that no. before the committee. No, not at all. Mr. Chairman, exactly so. I've said that. I've indicated that even before the acquisition, JOHL was in existence. So Very I've well. indicated that. So, Mr. Chairman, if the witness admits that JOHL was in existence and that GMPC then acquired JOHL from Anadaku, how does the witness reconcile that position with the assertion in his 2022 report that GMPC ceded JOHL, I mean, the, the acquisition to its subsidiary? How, how does he reconcile the two? Respectfully, Mr. Chairman, you know, there are some uh, information. Okay, let me go about this this way. GMPC initially, if I, may, if I may read. GMPC. JMPC initially told PIAC in our previous report, and if you remember where I read from, the same 3.1 point uh, that you have read uh, exactly. So you see that it says, this acquisition is to be transferred to GMPC Explorer. So GMPC itself was originally contemplating transferring this interest to Explorer and not to any other, and not to any other um, uh, company. Oh, now, wait, wait a minute, calm down, calm down. Yeah, don't let us do speculations here. I mean, let's do with what is on the, on the document. Chairman, let, can, you, can you listen to him carefully, please, and then uh, deal with it? Yes. And then, can you, can you re-emphasize the point so that he gets it right? Not, not what somebody was contemplating. I, I am, what we have by way of documentation? I'm making references to paragraphs in the 2021 and 2022 reports uttered by PIAC. One is to the effect that GMPC acquired 7% interest from Occidental. And another is to the effect that GMPC acquired 7% interest in Jubilee and 10 and later seeded Seeded, which connotes transfer to its subsidiary JOHL. I'm saying that the witness has proceeded to establish and admit before this committee that indeed and in fact GMPC acquired JOHL from Anadaku. So how does he reconcile the admission that JOHL was acquired to GMPC? ceding its interest to JOHL. Yes. Respectfully, Mr. Chairman, I think it is important for us to distinguish two terms. Acquiring a company is one term, and acquiring interest in respect of a given block is another completely separate term. And I think it is important for us to establish that point. The acquisition of JOHL in fact, was not necessarily about the acquisition of the interest per se. 
which GMPC had previously communicated to PIAC will be interest that will be transferred to Exploco. That is the point I was trying to establish. So GMPC would testify and agree with us that when we finally saw JOHL in the you picture. You can't be sure about that, can you? I'm yes, hoping they will be truthful on agree that. With you. When they finally gave us information about the transfers to JOHL, we queried why the original decision to have transferred to Explore was abandoned. Mr. Chairman, but of course, um, we cannot force um, you know, GMPC to, to give us all of the basis on which they have abandoned the Explore issue and went in for um, uh, JOHL. But, so, but Mr. Chairman, they have indicated to us that JOHL is a 100% subsidiary of the GMPC, and that is another issue we are looking at. And so, Mr. Chairman, when you marry the concept of a, ga uh, of a government or Ghana exercising its preemption right to acquire these right, uh, interests to the fact that GMPC represents the commercial interest of Ghana. Mr. Chairman, immediately, in our opinion as a committee, we were convinced that unless there is another way of trying to siphon revenues from the government, there was no reason why any other company... That, that, that unfortunately, could no criminality. Mr. Doesn't. Chairman, that was I said unless. Well, it is not to we say can, we, can do, we can do better than that. Can we right. rephrase? Can we rephrase? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Uh, you know, um, Alpha, uh, you are a witness of fact. I know you are also a legal practitioner yeah. Yeah, because you are my former student. Um, so, um, <laughs> Please leave your legal opinions aside and testify to the factual matters, the factual findings made by PIAC. Okay, Respect. that would be very helpful to the committee. Respectful, Mr. Chairman. Okay. That's Thank very well Thank noted. You. Yes. What PIAC, PIAC's consideration was that it would appear that if those monies did not come into the PHF, the state would be denied of legitimate revenues from petroleum. Operation. The difficulty with that answer is what I was struggling with you about. You remember, I was yeah. talking to you about companies and companies and companies. Anyway, he hasn't finished. Let him, let him continue. Yes? Yes, so please continue. I just got a text message from my wife that I, I, I should stop chewing. <laughs> <laughs> I had chewing. Pardon me. Powerful, powerful, powerful uh, no, no. Can, can we concentrate? <laughs> Let's leave the domestic matters aside yes, and concentrate operate. on this one. <laughs> so... We, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, so the cameras are watching you. So. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Mr. Alpha, uh, you let's leave the miscategorization as I see it uh, with respect to the JOHL uh, uh, seeding by GMPC and uh, acquisition by GMPC or aside from now, you, you indicate that uh, the, you are very familiar with the GMPC Act, no? Mr. Chairman, yes. Please, can you refer to Section 3 of the GMPC Act? And for purposes of the committee, if you may read 3A. Mr. Chairman, respectfully, I would use the opportunity to request for a copy of You don't have a copy? Okay, let me, let me assist you. Mr. Chairman, with your permission, the corporation shall, for the attainment of its objects under Section 2, exercise the following powers. For purposes of this conversation, I will just refer to A. With the approval of the minister, form subsidiary and affiliate companies, branches or agencies, in or outside the Republic to carry out activities which the corporation is authorized to undertake. Uh, I want to find out from the witness if he is familiar with this provision and if indeed he is. Is this inconsistent 
with GMPC's acquisition of GOHL outside their jurisdiction? Uh, um, you know, honorable members, uh, can we focus on the issue that is at stake? Yes, I'm building uh, a point, Mr. Yes. Chairman. And, and that, issue, that, issue, that issue relates to the manner in which the payment for the acquisition was executed. It is not about the corporate powers of GMPC, whether or not it has power to incorporate, uh, you know, subsidiaries whether inside the republic or outside the republic. It is the manner in which the payment for the acquisition was, um, you know, executed. And I think, I mean, from my reading of the PIAC report, their position is that the payment was in violation of statute. Can we concentrate on that? Well, I'm afraid, Mr. Chairman, we cannot, because that is the point that I was trying to, to, to raise with him, see if we can make sense of. I stopped short of developing further because I knew my other colleagues might be having a, a go at it. That's the point he's making. This whole issue has come about because there is some misunderstanding about the role of GMPC and how the money could be put into certain accounts. That's the point that he is developing. So if we come to understand that by law, GMPC could do what they did, then it may be unfair <laughs> to allege that he nearly slipped by saying that it was siphoning or whatever. By the process that he's discussing, which is the GMPC law, uh, PRDC law 64, the specific provisions, bear with us, the specific provisions discussing, would come to a conclusion, if we take it to this logical conclusion, that GMPC actually, I think, had both the constitutional and statutory right to do what has been missed for some of us, our understanding is uh, misconceived as having put into an account into which they were not supposed to do. That, I think, is what my colleague is trying to arrive at. Thank you very much, Chairman. You've, you couldn't have said it any better. Carry on. Thank you very much. So, uh, Mr. Alpha, having regard to the provisions that I just read to you, uh, would you agree with me that GMPC did not err in law in acquiring JOHL as incorporated at the time of acquisition? Well, you are asking the opinion, so he is now allowed to give opinion evidence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so please, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Respectfully, at last meeting, there were a lot of opinions that were allowed by the chair. And I'm surprised that now you are saying that we don't have, have to allow opinions. For him to do it, so don't worry. Go on. Respectfully, uh, Mr. Chairman, it is precisely the reason why we try to distinguish between acquisition of a corporate entity, distinguish from acquisition of interest, you know, in a particular uh, uh, but, block. Mr. Alpha, is it not? the fact that JOHL at the time that GMPC acquired it from Anadaku was the owner of these interest in these two blocks. Is it not factual? Respectfully, Mr. Chairman, that is factual and that is where we have even a problem as a committee and we raised it in our report, Mr. Chairman. But let's hear, let's hear the problem. You the, had the problem. The, the way he made reference to that in the report, I would love to yeah, see sure. that. But let's hear the problem. You had a problem. We need to know the nature. Mr. Chairman, like we established earlier, that there is a basis why, as a country, we decided to make a law to govern petroleum revenue management. And the basis is there. When you go back, and you look back at how we manage our mineral resources. Oh, no, no, no. Mr. No, Chairman, no, I'm establishing, a, a, I'm establishing a basis sorry, why sorry, we a took a decision. No, no, yeah. you have all the time to talk. Yeah. Listen, when the question is put, we want a concentration on it. He asked you a straight question that I that uh, the uh, Danako owed that particular um, uh, entity. Own. Uh, own, yeah, own that particular entity. Belong to them. So at the time of the acquisition, it was theirs. You said yes. And then you then added at the tail end that, but you have a problem with that. I thought you had a problem with Anadaku owing what is, uh, uh, what, what, what is the problem? No, 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 no. We have, uh -huh. it's the structuring. 
That is what we are yeah, having with problem. Yes. That, the problem that you have yes. or you had. Yes, the problem we had as a committee was with the entire transaction, exclusive of the fact that the, um, you know, JOHL was already owned by Anadako. Mr. Chairman, this is, I mean, I think we should look at it this way. Until the acquisition, until the acquisition. So explain the problem you had with it, and then we can move on. Yes. We can make progress. So, Mr. Yes. Chairman, if you look at uh, before the acquisition, the, the equity structure did not really include uh, JOHL before the acquisition. I mean, we have the documents from GMPC, if I can refer. The equity structure, ownership structure, did not include JOHL. It was after the acquisition that the, that issue of JOHL. That. So now your problem is why did Anadako create the JHOL? Sir, they didn't act, uh, include it from the very beginning. No. Belatedly, it came to be included. Is that it? That's Go why I, yeah. I wanted an opportunity to explain so we can piece together why. So, Mr. Chairman, we started developing our argument from the basis that the decision in the first place to acquire is based on the preemption rights that we exercise as a nation. And Mr. Chairman, we are building a point that as a public interest committee, we are interested in how uh, you know, the rights we acquire by virtue of exercising this preemption rights are paid for and how it, it benefits the people of the Republic of Ghana. Mr. Chairman, that is precisely why we as a committee have been created. So, Mr. Chairman, we started asking questions. You know, questions, we even queried GMPC how the, um, you know, when JOHL left, how would the returns be treated? And GMPC responded as they have maintained that this is a purely commercial transaction and that it is outside the ambit of the PRMA. And what we are saying is that for us, we don't have to uh, you know, analyze these things in isolation. We think that the most important thing that should always be at our mind should be about what is the aim of the Petroleum Revenue Management Act. And Mr. Chairman, that was why I wanted to establish the basis in the first place why the Petroleum Management Act you know, came into existence. Because if we know the philosophical basis why it came, then you we should... You want to tell us that? Uh, you want to tell us now? We, we don't know about that. Mr. Chairman, I know we know, because I'm sitting it. before uh, Parliament. Of you, course, you I think, understand. You think we know? Yes. Oh, I thought you said... You it's just a matter us. of refreshing our memory uh, okay. on that. All right. Mr. Chairman, if you remember the debates that went into the enactment of the PRMA, one critical issue had to do with how we manage our mineral resources and revenues in the past. And we wanted to avoid all the problems that mineral revenue management in the past brought to this country, to the extent that we have a country where we cannot point to visible evidence of mineral revenue management utilization. And so on the basis of that, we come out with a Petroleum Revenue Management Act that details the precise nature of how deposits and disbursements would be done within the confines of the law. And so, Mr. Chairman, our position is that in respect of these uh, monies that were you know, generated from petroleum revenue upstream, we think that whether directly or indirectly generated through a, a, a supposed, Mr. Chairman, subsidiary, we think it constitutes revenue management, uh, revenue, revenue, petroleum revenue within the intendment of the law uh, that's fine. to have been paid uh, into the right. PHF. Yeah, continue that is that. the position of PR. Continue. Okay. Yeah, man. Th thank you. Uh, the witness has demonstrated clearly knowledge of Companies Act of R. By his initial comments to the effect about the distinctiveness of companies from their shareholders. 
want to find out from him whether the revenues of the company or can be treated as the revenue of his shareholder. I want to find out from him. Mr. Chairman, it is the understanding of FIAC that revenues from IOCs or private companies are not revenues that go into the petroleum uh, holding fund. It is the statutory uh, you know, revenues that we are talking about that should go into the petroleum holding fund. The revenue of a limited liability company by reason of the fact that each shareholder is GMPC as a statutory revenue. As a chairman, our understanding is that once GMPC acquired JOHL, the interest held by JOHL, you know, as a subsidiary of GMPC, you know, in our opinion, should form part of the overall interest of the GMPC. Uh, Mr. Co-Chairman, see, that's the difficulty I have. You know, you answer the questions, and then we seem to be going back. You know, it's a little yeah. difficult but, for no, us to the, comprehend. No, the, uh, you know, I think, the, uh, once again, uh, no, just, just a minute. You see the, the mind, okay, you take it all right. You know, see, I don't think it is entirely your, your understanding of it, whatever. I think your understanding has posited in the law that we are dealing with. So try as much as possible to operate within the confines of the law. Hmm? Your opinions, yes. we all have yes. our opinions. Yes. Mr. Mr. Chairman, exactly so. And our understanding is that we may have varying interpretations. You may have an interpretation to the law. And so your interpretation of this is that even though it is a, a private company, yes. its finances should be what, considered? No, no that's not my position. Uh, that's not our position. Uh, with, all, with all due respect to my co-chair and the members of the committee. I think that the questioning of the witness is going beyond the remit of what is contained in the, in the PIAC report. The violation, which is a subject matter of interest before this committee, is with respect to the funds that were used for the acquisition of the interest in, J, I mean, in J, J -O -H -L, a limited, yes, the interest. All right. Actually, no, no uh, that's actually not the case. No, that is the case. That is the case. That is the case. Completely case. not. Then we ourselves will have to get a comprehension of what this is all about uh, because that is not our understanding. Can can we can we wait, Mr. Chairman? So revenue and its treatment. No. And revenue, seeking revenue, to revenue. That there has been no wrongdoing whatsoever. No. None whatsoever. No. You, you are, we were actually going to go back and deal with the fact of the acquisition itself. It is aware of the source of money that was used in acquiring it in the first place. What we are discussing so far is the money from the various fields, the liftings, the liftings. That is what we are saying that went into the wrong account. That's what we are dealing with. Mr. Chairman, actually, the money that was used to acquire the acquisition itself is in question together that brought us to the conclusion we have come to. Mr. Chairman, the actual fact is that the monies that were advanced for the acquisition. Mr. Chairman, I may want to draw your attention whether you are following that. He is actually going into a different field. No, 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 he is. What the witness is speaking about, I have no problem because if he finishes, then uh, it means that he had opened the Pandora's box, and we can ask him questions on that. No, that is all actually once again, going on a field of his own. Once again, this is all come out. This new dimension is come about because we think that uh, co-chairman um, put the issue in a different direction from how we have come to understand it. Yeah. We think that the money in question is the liftings, and not the acquisition. He now says that, well, 
He seems to understand that it is, no, he's saying that, well, the issue we are discussing, the 100 million or whatever they are complaining about, is, clarify for us, the 100 million you are talking about is in respect of what? Is it a lip? Is it a lip? Be grateful if you limit the witness. This is a witness of the committee. And the witness is actually assisting the committee. So whatever questions that we have asked, what we want him to actually, do we have to agree that he is talking about the fact that the liftings were not paid into a proper account. That's all he's saying. As to now, he is actually delving into the acquisition of the JHOL. And that's not why we are here. That's not why he was invited. I mean, Sami is eager to, to yeah. make a contribution. Well, you, you, you talk. No, no, Mr. Chairman, it's important to emphasize that there are a whole gamut of issues. I disagree with the respected Honorable Enimedu that it is just one item to do with lifting. There are so many other related matters when you read the PIAC report. And when I take my turn, I'll be pointing to those issues. We should not, no, we should it, not, Sammy, yes. Take us I think we are looking at, one second, we are looking at what they said that here you called whatever, made the first lift at the total of the hundred and whatever million. Is that yes. not what we are dealing with? There are, we no, no, there, that not what we are dealing that's with? not the only matter. If you look at the PR, I mean, if you, if you, if you, if you pay regard to their report, they raise other consequential matters. For example, capital gains tax, they raise it. We have to look at that. Well, they raise, they, they raise, they raise, they raise the acquisition of the seven percent shares. We have to look at that. It's all in the report. Uh, so, Mr. so, Mr. so, Mr. so, I, 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 I take strong, strong exception to the attempt to rewrite the rules and to uh, and off. to and to narrow put off and restrict us, put Mr. Off, Chairman. Off. Chairman, uh, Chairman, um, Um, before you do, um, um, Dr. Wanta, Dr. Wanta, Dr. wanted to raise a point. Of Are you still raising the point? No. Yes. Um, Co-chair, if I may, normally when we sit at a committee, you must actually address the chair and have permission from the chair before you speak. I think it's unfair that we just keep interjecting 
We ask questions. We don't let the witness continue. Then we keep interjecting without seeking your permission to actually have that opinion, uh, opportunity to interrupt. And it's created you know of an issue with this let's thank try and allow Th this thank to, you for the reminder proceed. we would we'll, we'll try and abide by that okay um go on you know, just, just so that we, we we wrap up this this issue um I, I want to find out from the witness whether you agree with me that with his knowledge of very well whether the witness will agree with me that johl's revenue cannot be commingled with that of GMPC. Respectfully, Mr. Chair, in the strictest consideration, yes. Very well. And that, and that it is only dividends that as shareholder of GMPC, when it receives from JOHL, that would amount to an indirect revenue that then goes into the petroleum holding funds. Mr. Chairman, yes. Mr. Chairman, we hold a contrary opinion that it is only dividends per se. Mr. Chairman, I'm trying to, as a committee, that's why we're trying to give the basis on which we have come to our conclusion. See, this whole transaction to the understanding of PIAC is an indirect, you know, way of the republic, uh, you know, gaining revenue from that transaction that if you look at it from that perspective and we are of the opinion that if you look at section six and seven which we indicated earlier the law is clear this is a specific law created for petroleum revenue management and there is a reason why it is taken from the ambit of public financial management generally even though the rules still apply to have a specific law for Petroleum Revenue Management Act. And Mr. Chairman, the committee's position is that to the extent that any amount received by government directly or indirectly from petroleum resources should form part of the petroleum revenues of Ghana, okay. the committee's of the that, opinion that, that, that is well said. Uh, Honorable Mesa, your last, your last question on this point. Mr. Chairman, I want to find out from the witness, uh, having regard to what he just said, what he would classify as direct revenue and what he would classify as indirect revenue. Very well. Honorable um, Alpha. Respectfully, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you look at uh, uh, Section 6, there are some of the revenues that are clear in our minds. Royalties, that would be a direct revenue. Um, something like Surface rentals would be a direct revenue. Corporate income tax would be a direct revenue. Additional oil entitlement would be a direct revenue. Mr. Chairman, um, when you look at and even bonuses, if you have to consider the Petroleum Exploration Production Act, would have to be considered as direct revenue. But, Mr. Chairman, when you look at the structure of this transaction for me i'm clear in my mind that i would even have suggested direct but i'm clear in my mind it's an indirect uh, uh, wait a minute yes. you say you don't know what is on our minds you don't know what we ourselves think about this structure you are talking about we're dealing with specific questions you take us back yeah. you take us back i'm struggling yeah. i'm struggling no, uh, mr chairman the, the transaction the nature we have yeah. now would uh, be one of those transactions pr could consider as an indirect very well yes that's okay. Now, um, Honorable uh, Sami Ablakwa, your side has taken, so let's go to. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I will first like to place on record that those of us in Parliament who follow your reports keenly 
I am impressed with the thoroughness of your work. And I want to commend all of you at PIAC for the work you do. Uh, you are working in the national interest and also for God and country. And uh, I would like to also remind all of us that you are here as expert witnesses to, to, to assist the committee. And so we are only interested in facts. We want to unravel the truth. So you are not uh, here as, um, uh, if you like, an accused, for want of a better word. So I will, I will adopt uh, a different posture, more. And we can get to the bottom of the fact. I will adapt. I will adapt a more forward-looking posture, if you like. As that, opposed that, to which, as opposed to which one? You, you, you say you don't like friendlier, and um, I just wanted to stay. No, the as opposed rules. to which one? You would adopt more friendlier. You say you don't like to, friendlier. No, no, no. As opposed to what the hostile, uh, whatever. Yes. Friendlier. So you don't like the word. Who hostile. is adopted the hostile? Uh, I'm just making a general statement, just to just to just to establish a ground rules in case. In case those following proceedings are probably getting confused. Yeah. So, so uh, if, uh, Chair, can I proceed? All right. So, Mr. Alpha. Yes. Section 7 of Act 815 as amended provides that revenue due from the direct or indirect participation of the Republic in petroleum operations, including the carried and participating interest, shall be paid into the Petroleum Holding Fund. You have stated very clearly, emphatically, in your 2021 report, and the 2022 media report, you re-highlighted the matter and said that you take the strong view that the section I just read, section 7, has been breached. I want to understand with all of what has transpired so far, all the contestations, does PIAC still stand by what we are working with in Parliament, which the proponents of this vote of censure motion have submitted, that there is breach of Section 7 of Act 815, the Petroleum Revenue Management Act as amended. Do you stand by your report, or have there been any variations, if there have been variations, can you let us know? That's perfectly, Mr. Chairman. In respect of this matter, we stand by our position. And to be clear, what is that position? Mr. Chairman, our position is that the revenues accrued from that lifting by GOHL constitute an indirect participation of the Republic of Ghana in petroleum operations, and to that extent ought to have been paid into the PHF, respectfully, Mr. Chair. Now, I want to come to your response to a question that Co-Chair Dr. Dominic Ayini asked about monies used to pay for the 7% share. Did I hear you say that you were not sure where those monies came from, whether it came from GMPC or it came from the Ministry of Finance? Respectfully, Mr. Chairman, we are well aware of where it came from. In a written uh, report on the petroleum operations, January to December 2021, which is a response to PR questions at validation, GMPC has this to say. On a query 
in respect of paragraph four, uh, 14 of that, we, which was that we asked GMPC to provide an update on the additional interest acquired by the state through GMPC in 2021 on the Jubilee and 10 fills from Occidental Petroleum, including the cost ownership structure of the two fills and any other relevant information. In response to PIAC, GMPC has this to say. What um, the current ownership structure of the Jubilee and 10 fills are attached to this correspondence, those ones are there, but essentially on the question you just asked. GMPC Explorer and Jubilee Oil Holding Limited are both 100% owned commercial subsidiaries of GMPC. However, the JOHL interest would be ceded to GMPC Explorer. Now it comes down, the shares of Jubilee Oil Holdings Limited, the company that owns the 7% commercial stake, were acquired at the cost of 164 million seven hundred and ninety eight thousand six hundred and ninety one million dollars by GMPC through a share purchase agreement between Anadarko and offshore uh, Anadarko offshore and GMPC with monies advanced by the Ministry of Finance. GMPC is required to repay the amount advanced of one hundred is, I mean, the amount I have just realized. Yes, so the monies were advanced by the Ministry of Finance. That is consistent with page nine of your 2022 semi-annual report. Page nine, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I read. It says the shares of Jubilee Oil Holdings Limited, the 7% commercial stake, were acquired at the cost of $164.7 million by GMPC through a share purchase agreement between Anadako Offshore and GMPC with monies advanced by the Ministry of Finance. GMPC has started repaying the advance amount of $164.798 million. Now, can you tell us this advance by the Ministry of Finance did you see any contract, any agreement? Do you know the terms when uh, they are supposed to pay uh, back this money? Because these are taxpayer funds. Hopefully, Mr. Chairman, we do not know. But when we requested for information, it wasn't part of the uh, information that was furnished to us. I, so we, let us also understand. Um, to put a question the way you did, is it a suggestion that there was no contract underpinning the payments or I don't well, quite get Well, we haven't seen any contract. And I've gone through the 2022 budget the media review, I've also gone through the 2021 budget, and this House, Parliament, has not, it's not aware of this transaction by the Minister of Finance. It's, I've also looked at all the appropriation to, to bills. To pay for the uh, yes, this, GMPC, this $100 million dollar transaction, yes. It's not in any of the budget. $100 million is the lifting. The $100 million is the lifting. Is that a 164 you're talking yes, about? The, yeah, the 164. The 164. The 164. Which is the acquisition cost. Yes. You, you haven't seen any It's not in so. any of uh, our... our uh, Approvals so, in this house. A suggestion that we had it for free or something. So I just, I just want to know the source of funds, if they have an idea, or if they've seen that, that agreement. Because you only tell us that, that GMPC has started repaying.